All right. We're going to start. Um, I'm going to be talking about my Jackwasuri. Now, this is a series and this is part one. So let me say my Jackwa story. My Jackwa story. And this is series one. Okay. My Jackwa story series one. Or part one. Let's say part one. This is the first of its kind. I have always wanted to do this. I finally get the courage to do this. So I am interested and I'm excited about this. Welcome, Olaide underscore AK. Welcome, Treasury underscore Say. Welcome, Ivy underscore Tech. Welcome, Jack Feel Nine. Welcome, the underscore Q underscore Win. Welcome, guys. We are going to be talking about my Jackpot story, and I do have a guest I invited. This series is going to um, come up every Sunday at 9 p.m. Um, Eastern Time. So please, if you miss this one, or if you know someone, that you know will be interested in um listening to the struggles of an immigrant the success of an immigrant then please share this that would be so helpful so my name is busayo hi demos josephine um my name is busayo shita saladin i am an immigrant i am an african immigrant i immigrated from nigeria eight years ago we all have stories to tell and this is my jackpa story i do have a guest for the first time yes and every week we're gonna be inviting different people from different background from african background because even though i know almost a lot of african immigrants i do know some spanish immigrants some Asian immigrants, different race, different tribe, different country. So we're going to try to get outside of our comfort zone. Because even though we're all immigrants, I very well know that we face the same, almost the same struggle. So we're going to try and always, you know, invite different people. Hi, love of Jesus, 33. Welcome. So back to my story. I um, emigrated from Nigeria eight years ago to the US of A. And let me tell you, it's been, you know, when you first come, it's always like this. And then eventually it seems like it's like this and it stays like this for a while. And you're like, when am I going to come, you know, go I help like that? You know, it's, it's, it's a lot it's a lot of struggle it's a lot of story hello sister hi i do know that there's so many people that have a story to tell so if you're one of the people that you feel like yes you have a story to tell also please send me a dm send me a dm and i'm using this page because even though um this is my business page my clothing business which i feel like most people know about my story kind of via this page my personal page i think for the longest i just ignored it and then started you know coming back up on it last year so so anyways back to what i was saying i came to the u.s when i was 33 years old um having had a life in nigeria you know i had my business i was doing very well you know in my business um relatively relatively i was doing very well and I came to the US and I didn't come to the US just to come to, you know, do anything. I came to the USA to study nursing. So I went back to school. People in my class were like 18 year olds, um, you know, 17, you know, 15. No, no 15, but like 17, 18 years old. Where those I was in class with. Now tell me how as a Nigerian, that people used to call you auntie when you were in Nigeria. Then you come here 
and then you know omonue let me say how it is the a child you can actually give birth to that you can birth calls you by name everybody rubbishes you talk to you anyhow like you know they don't care anyways it was a struggle also there were so many things i was used to when i came i didn't have a car um so i i went from having a car having so many things to come into america and i know like people think that africa is just this place that you know people live in the bushes no let's not joke africa the africa i grew up in we were balling we were living the life we had you know people house people that i don't want to say housemates but we like we had like housekeepers we had i had a driver and then my um my fashion store i had office assistants i had so many people i had a personal assistant you know you just spoiled now that i think of it you're spoiled but then i come to america i'm my personal assistant i'm the errand girl i'm the this i'm the that then you come and start doing things that you know in your wildest dream you never thought to do and then on top of that when i just came back then when i came people were it wasn't this it wasn't even called jackpot as a matter of fact one of the things that i did when i came i couldn't even tell people that ran away at jackpot i hid it i didn't let people know because then if you jackpot people think that you're not doing well that you're just you've been forming that you've been doing well that you're not doing well and that's why you jackpot so when i came i couldn't even tell people i couldn't do videos you know how people do behind this is like this is how you help this is what you do to help and even when people were reaching out to me and saying please can you share this video online about how you started nursing and all that i would tell them can i personally just tell you how to go about it being an international student instead of um you know sharing it to the platform i was that comfortable doing that behind the scenes rather than coming out to tell my story but i feel <laughs> somebody said the only place i ever suffered is america i sis i feel you 1000% there's a lot of story and I know that and you know what sis you can also come up on this and we'll talk about it anyways so I wasn't even comfortable telling people how you know I came about to being an international student so but you know I could tell them behind the scenes like I'll be like send me a DM I'll tell you the processes to which you can be an international student and so you know also coupled with the fact that I think felt that i mean i've only been ever been here but felt that yes yes also coupled with the fact that i lost my train of th thoughts also coupled with the fact that i had a business i had a business that was thriving as a matter of fact the year i left that i came to the u.s was one of the most successful for my business i had partnered with um was it ebony live tv some stylists you know reached out you know they we did a show with ebony life tv fashion i i opened up you no know, prior to that year we opened up a fashion studio you know so there were many people baby we was you know in in everybody's face we had an interview with bbc so it was a good i had you know i had business partners they used to sell fabrics shout out to kb fabrics they used to sell fabrics i was sewing fabrics they would just you know when people buy from them they'll send to me business was booming was it a nice time to come <laughs> honestly i don't know now i don't know but you know i had to come because i got an admission and shout out to my mom and my husband but these guys are like they were on my neck you have to go and i'm like I, i'm not living how can i leave the known for the unknown and let me tell you looking back now <laughs> you know i'm glad <laughs> you know i'm glad i came but ah ah man it was a struggle things are, are different now honestly now you know you don't have to stay with family members when you come you can have your own place even from nigeria you can get somewhere to stay you don't have to go stay with family members ah let me tell you guys, I slept on the couch for six, seven months. Honestly, shout out to my uncle that took us in. 
and was very nice about you know us staying over at his place even though we thought that so many issues we thought that we we're gonna just stay with him for three months and then get an apartment guess what you cannot get an apartment you cannot get a, an apartment if you don't have um credit history how will I have credit history? Number one, when I first came, you know how Nigeria, you don't, you don't owe anybody. You don't believe in credit. Anytime you want to spend something, you use your money. So when I got to America, the first six months, that I was supposed to have gotten, you know, credit history, um, credit card and start building up my credit. I said, me, collect credit, go for bid. I can't collect credit. Why would I collect credit? So all the while there was supposed to be, America will break you and make you. <laughs> All the while when I was supposed to be building credits, I was still being Nigerian and say never will I ever get credit. So anyways, when it was time to get apartments, when I'd finally settled in, I think, into, into America, you know, some sort. When it was time to get an apartment, if I go here, they'll say, I can't, you can't give, get an apartment. You don't have credits. If, you get, if I go there, you can't get an apartment. So we just kept, ah, hey, God. <sighs> Ah, it's so far do it not like so, compared to some people. I mean, I have a sister that said that she slept in a house that had bed bugs, like every time it was on the hard floor during cold. So compared to me, I don't think that you know I suffer that much. But when I tell you that I suffer because I came from Nigeria, I didn't even understand that when you come here, you don't even need to stress. First off, I brought my all my clothes for winter in Nigeria. Who does that? In my head, I'm like, let me save my money. So let me buy all the clothes from Nigeria. Guess what? I share Nigerians. Ah, God, help me. I went to yeah, um, Tejoso, Yaba in Lagos. That's where they said they were selling all the all the puffer jacket. It's not puffer. What, please, if you're coming here, do not buy any puffer in, in Yaba, Lagos or anything. I don't know what they put in it, but it wasn't wool. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was nothing. Because once we landed, ha, the cold that eats me. I say, it was about to send me back to sender. But you know, so, ah, good. And the couple do it. I don't even know how people now will do it, but then back then with the exchange rates, it was still, we're still thinking that converting from Naira to dollar, very stressful. So now I don't know how people would do it. People that want to jack my now, I don't know how they want to do it. Anyways, I can go on and on, but I'll be telling you guys little by little. <laughs> I'm going to invite um, my first guest. Now this person I feel should be the first person that I'm going to invite just because um, he knows all of the struggles that I've gone through. And he has struggles of his own. So I feel he's the right person to invite. Now, going forward, if you want to be a part of this and share your successes and your struggles, and we can laugh about it and cry and, you know, just be human about it for other people to know that it's not peculiar to only them, please just let me know. But for today, I am going to be calling on Lagos Dragon. Now, Lagos Dragon is my husband and he kind of knows all of the story, but I would like to really hear from him. And even though, you know, we live together, I would live. His own journey has been because I came to America before him. I was here, I think, four years. Hey, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> I was just telling people that you know even though you're my husband that i came here before you and so i suffered and you just came you came to boil <laughs> you didn't have to sleep you didn't have to sleep on the on the couch for six months you didn't have to read in the toilets because you didn't want to wake your kids up so you know you didn't have to when night when you came i had a car already you didn't have to walk on that the 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 cold I like a, I like an Eskimo. Like I'll cover my face everywhere like this and go and you know, you came, you came, everything was was pure when you came, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first and foremost, we we, we we did all those struggles together. True. Some I was there physically. We 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 made the 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 trips and the journeys you know, together in person. Yes. Some, I was there. In spirit. 
in spirit. Like, I'll, I, you know, with the time difference, I'll have received some phone calls about some things, and I, you were my, you were my psychologist, I have to and be. my, and yeah, you were everything. <laughs> so that's why I feel like you're the person, the first person that understands this situation better than you know any other person because you understand the struggle that I went through. But then you're also an immigrant. <laughs> So you also in, have in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm the guinea pig. You're, you're going to guinea. experiment with exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah, but it's a good experiment. I'm game. Okay, can you please, um, you know, introduce yourself to people who don't know you, even though I know some people know you more than them. <laughs> can you please introduce yourself to people? Tell okay. us, you know, what you do and all. And how long you've been in the U.S.? Mm. Okay, so my name is Tony Saladin. Um, people who know me online knows me as Lagos Dragon. Um, I moved to the U.S. permanently in 2019. Prior to that, I've been coming to the U.S. for vacations, visits, and stuff like that for over 10 years before I decided to, to move. Um, I was the banker back home in Nigeria. Um, it was it was a comfortable life. I know, right? <laughs> in Nigeria, it and was, um, it was um, settling in wasn't easy for me. You know, wow. the transitioning, transitioning. Was, transitioning. Was, was tough, but I will. I will just say that I'm finally getting it. You're getting and, it. Uh, yeah, I'm finding my feet. So I'll just let you lead because I have these tendencies to talk. No, so don't talk you too need, much. I want you to <laughs> structure like, it so that... We have like 45 uh, want, minutes to one okay, hour. So yeah. I want you to guide where you... What yeah, you yeah, need, for sure. For sure. About. I didn't want to, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to... All right. the, as you have the tendency to talk, I feel like I also have the tendency to carry on. So I want you to, you know, have your moments, you know. Okay. So, like, before I ask you how long it took you to transition, what made you decide to um, emigrate? <sighs> well, that's um, a kind of loaded question. But I'll say two things. Number one was i know a lot of people say this but in my own case it's true i want better for my family most especially my kids i if i take my back my mind back i my first daughter was attending a school in lagos it was, was reputed to be one of the best schools and back then over 10 years ago we are paying about 500,000 naira yep. for a toddler. I know, I'm not going to mention the name of it. Yeah, and, and I wasn't feeling the quality. So, I, 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 I'm going to cut in there. I remember when I made up my mind. I know you guys have been, you know, on my neck to come. Eight years, I would never, I seen about <laughs> past six. Somebody said, this is, let me tell you sis. I'm with you. I, I feel you. <laughs> So you know what made me decide, even though you guys have been telling me that I had to go. And I would tell people that the reason why we ah she said she suffered though. <laughs> but since when I saw you, you didn't look like you were suffering, you were you were looking so nice. <laughs> so, you know, my daughter, she wasn't um born in the US. My son was. So, you know, aside the fact that I wanted um them to have a better education, I also felt like I needed for both of them to have, you know, the blue pea. So, you know, I feel like that was one of the reasons why I said I was going to come. For me, another reason was because one day we had a um, parent teachers association and we went for the, for the meeting. I remember in Nigeria, parent teachers association, we, we had parent teachers association at that, if I shouldn't have gone on that, but good, God, God knew why he wanted me to go. Because when, when we got there, Aside from that, we had paid, oh, we had paid ridiculous amount, oh. They now asked us again to contribute money for the library. I'm like, what? Why would we contribute contribute money? Meanwhile, my daughter was doing swimming classes. 
Do you know that after the swimming classes, nobody was at the other school. They left my daughter alone. How old was she then? They left her alone, a toddler. They left her alone to be the everybody left. And she was the only person. At that point, I think I just got pissed and said, you know what? I am ready to move. I'm ready to jack back. But then I got cold feet again. And then I got sick. Do you remember? Yeah. Then I got sick. And then I had a near-death experience. Then I said, okay, okay. All right, time to bounce. So, yeah. So, that's my three reasons why I finally decided that it was time. Yeah. Then, um, after that, I, on, on a personal level too, because I also like to travel. And um, I didn't like the fact that most times when I need to visit a country, I need to putting for visas, gather so much documents, and I felt like, okay, if I get a US passport, then this will be much easier. And we started the process, you guys came here, you, didn't you know, all, didn't the, want to come. all the ups <laughs> and downs, but you one, didn't want to come. one funny thing about life is that uh, this at this particular point in my life then things started like moving very very fast and very well at work i was getting promoted i was getting bonuses <laughs> so it was it was it was a really tough decision for me to make because things were going well at home and if i move here i'll be leaving something known and that's for the unknown. wonderfully well for the unknown over i remember there. i remember fighting with you one day i was like oh so you just threw us you came back and let me tell you guys this it is very hard on a serious note it's very tough on families when some people leave and some people are still back home i or oh, i'm of the opinion that everybody should leave at the same time let's all suffer together let's all start from scratch honestly it might seem like it's selfish but i've seen a lot of families that have been scattered just from this jackpa for you know for, for for people that are married and i i feel like if you want to jackpa i think it's better on young people single people you know than a family, you know, husband, wife, the kid is hard on the kids. I don't think my son has gotten over the period of time that you went around. It still hugs you. Like, you know, he has to always, you have to put him to bed and he's 10. But he was a practically like a child when we left. And so he hasn't gotten used to that. I still believe that as a family, everybody should come together. And everybody yeah. should. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you and i feel anybody who is thinking about relocating should do it when they are very young and um it's also easy for people who are young and who are probably financially or economically challenged back home it's easier because things are not going on well and you just move into a better place okay let or, me let me let me let me ask you a question like how much do you think people should have now now if they want to come here like how much do you think they it's have it's 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 hard to put a a figure like on it like that but but what i'll say is that people should do their researches zero in on the state or the county where they want to be then kind of find out how much it would take for them to leave for a minimum of six months my god that's a lot of accommodation bills feeding get the car, feeding and all that before and of course they need to come correct in terms of their papers before they come but before we get um derailed you 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 mentioned about uh my kids and all that 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 was that was what eventually change my mind because then i felt that okay i can do this so i was actually coming to the u.s so like three like times a year four three times, four a, times. Yeah, actually, yes. I come I every quarter every quarter four 
I eventually, but I remember this particular time that I was, there are so many, I don't even, I'm so suffering from PTSD <laughs> from every time I you have visit to leave. and I have to leave and the look on everybody's faces, the cries and I'll be crying in the Uber from the house to the airport all the way in the plane back to Nigeria. It, my heart just couldn't take it anymore. I just said that. Well, no matter what I was enjoying back home in Nigeria, I think it's better we all just be together and face this. It wasn't tough. I was 40 when I moved here. You, like they say, you can't teach an old dog new it's tricks. tricks yeah. it, 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 it wasn't easy. So, so, but, yeah. so Betty, Betty underscore underscore Boo says that it's, a, it's very expensive that a lot of people cannot afford that coming from back home to have six months of 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 um money you know saved like i said there are two 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 kinds of people who move here there are people who are really really financially challenged i feel those categories of people it doesn't matter they come here they make it work i say it's, it's like they knock it down and do it yeah but for some other categories of people these are upper middle class to higher class people in nigeria or africa or wherever they're coming from they they are used to a certain standard of living and if but they don't, set don't, their mind to hold it on, hold on. On, on that on that aspect you do know that even if you're higher class in nigeria you come and become lower lower class lower class. yeah that's why you 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 need to have certain level of savings to at least a bit of a safety net if i'm how are you Hi, yeah Samata. yeah it's it, that is no way because of the exchange rate no matter what you've got back home in nigeria when you call or in africa the fact that the us dollar is a stronger currency it's gonna devalue whatever you've got but what if i come and then stay with family members like and i'll just you know i can just have money ticket because most people don't have that much money they just have like ticket money to bring them or even if i do have the money i'll just be like before because when i was coming i felt like i had some money but i didn't want to just get an apartment just like that so you know i was opportunity not to stay with my uncle but like some people have family members or somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that could have they could have stayed with what yeah. if that that's 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 another thing that people coming from africa needs to ah. understand back home you could just move into somebody's house it's okay it doesn't increase their cost or their bills or anything like if anybody comes to live in a house in lagos we we in fact we do have a lot of people that come around living and all that it's totally okay but here in the u.s what are you don't increase too the, much. Much. the moment you increase the sun is going to the toilet too much <laughs> The, 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 How many the, times? The electricity bill, a lot of things. But a lot sorry, of things I have comes. a question. Do you mm -hmm. feel that people in the, you know, if people are abroad, mm -hmm. do you feel that, I don't know how to say it in English, do you feel that one man corner? No, honestly, do you feel that they are not accommodating? It, it, you see, one thing about that we, when we come from Africa, or from wherever we're coming from is that we see people who live here because of if you compare the standard of living back home and what we think they have here we think everybody's comfortable why is it difficult for this person to just accommodate me for six in months his, uh, first but it's most people in, I, i'm not even talking about immigrants alone statistics in, in America is that most Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. That means when they collect money from their job, they just use it to pay bills. God I save them. Bills, God save them if that bills now 
skyrockets because a family decides to come and stay with them. So it's nobody, everybody wants to be nice. Everybody wants to accommodate people, but sometimes their pockets cannot accommodate visitors. Uh, well, and that is why the, would it that be is that? the reality of America. Okay, okay, I understand. But why is the normal African? To be in low, three months, if it's like three months to six months, they'll start just like acting funny to you. Why, why, why? It's, it's, that's, it still boils down to what we're talking about. When you come in, the expectation is that it's just going to be a temporary thing. And if you stay in that long, it's like you want to make it permanent. And they're just tolerating their pocket, and not the person now, the pocket is just tolerating your being there. And the longer you stay, the more you want to shower in the morning and in the night. Okay. You have more electronics, you use ether, and okay. it's shooting up the bill. Okay. How about I'm here? I just need you to show me the ropes. I'm not a, I'm not a I'm not a um um lazy person. I just need to tell you to tell me why do people that have been here that have been here for like 20 years, why is it that it's so hard for them to even show ropes to people that are just coming in? They can't even re receive you well, they can't tell you, oh, it's, it's as if if I show you the way, you're gonna make it faster than myself. I've been this America. I've yeah. heard I've heard people tell me that, oh, you think it's easy? You think I just come to America and just come and make it fast like that? Why do they do that? Because I hear a lot of people say, Oh, look at what my family member did. Look at what my, my friend did. You know, they were they were supposed to I asked them about something. They didn't show me. I I, I required I needed help. They wouldn't take me there. I've heard different stories like that. Why, I, why do you think that happens? I, I would just say that there are three kinds of people when we're talking about things like this. Number one, there are people who actually don't know. Mm -hmm. They are here, they got a job, and because the rate is low, they probably have to work 16, 18 hours a day when you when you go to work for that long you probably don't even know so when people ask you they don't know okay there are some other kind of people that this is something i've had people talk about they were like i suffered when i got okay. to america you have to suffer you, too. you have to suffer that's what Olu, I'm so like, when i came to america <laughs> I, somebody said you walked at a car wash in winter. So, so when when his friend came, he made that's sure what, that that friend he, also washed <laughs> car <laughs> during winter. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make it sense. It doesn't make sense. And that's sometimes that's where our community sometimes is not growing, you not know. in terms of number, but in terms of in terms of quality because we are supposed to be like ladders for each other and some people they'll be like oh i'm here you just came in you should be here if you if i help you from here you are going to be here we'll be doing and, like this and and Not they, don't, they, shoulder. they don't so, they don't so <laughs> Olua Modupe <laughs> says that's a bad notion about our people they don't want you to make it before them yeah that you know and then bad day bad day boy says you can't judge them because you don't know the experience you had with others they have helped so <laughs> True, that's another that's it that but the the the, 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 the 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 there is also a third kind of people that we don't talk about enough there are actually people who genuinely want the best for you whatever information they have whatever connect they have they will link you up they will tell you about it but you know the human mind we have this negative bias we usually want to focus so much about the bad ones but there are also good people i've been fortunate to meet people who pointed me in the right or in the in, in direction of opportunities giving me information so i feel there are people like that but they are the notorious ones <laughs> 
They want you to suffer. You have to suffer. Yeah, yeah. Can, and they will. I can yeah, see in America. This is actually what Bade Bo yeah. said. Uh, yeah. The, that the, that the, 20 years ago, I helped this person. Yeah. He, 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 so, yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, thank you for the need. You're thank not supposed to move it's, 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 it's not business. You, you are not expected to even get anything. In just, return. Just be kind yeah. for being kind sake. You don't need to, you don't need to expect anything back from helping people. So, only, only Clara, Bosse, oh God, if I butter your name i apologize i'm sorry that was bad you have to give information to people to help them settle faster than you did so the thing is i feel like this is why other countries or other races do better like the indians you know the asians if one india enter one organization <laughs> trust me any other party will not enter that organization again but i feel like as nigerians we have this uh, um Pepe, my neighbor, mindset that ah, I can we all be on the same level, you know, or just have that feeling that oh, if I help you, start raising shoulder. So that's why. Hello, Nolade, uh, Nolade, Nolade. Hi, how are you? Hello, my people. Welcome, welcome. Um, Bade Boy says sometimes the people you are depending on might not have the right information. It's good to make our research before moving to abroad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Ex exactly what we yeah. what we said earlier. Do your research when you are even asking question because sometimes the quality of your answer depends on the quality of your questions. So if you also, don't if you yeah. don't know if you are not asking the right question or you are right asking the wrong person, people people don't yeah take for example you you mentioned the the indians and the, you you see africans everybody came in and because the people they know are in healthcare but i want to tell you okay healthcare but, healthcare healthcare and do you know but the, you see the funny thing no many people are like registered nurses the healthcare they are like doing 10 dollars let me break it down to you guys you first come you come to um, america you you don't have any bills though your eyes haven't opened you haven't realized that you can go just go to a car dealer and pick up a shop a car new car and walk back out and then you pay later you haven't realized all of those things or you can go to a store buy designers buy everything you haven't realized you just come you're coming with your nigerian mindset that calculates naira that dollar to naira so you come they start paying you, paying you $10. They tell you, do CNA, quickly go and do CNA or DMA or DNA or something. You do it for like a week, you get a job. You get a $10 per hour job. You're doing this job. And then you assume that this job is going to take you five years when your eyes have opened. When your family members are needing you to send money every month to them. That's the funny thing we need to change our mindset on in Nigeria, from Africa. You, even if you're going to do a healthcare job, make sure that you're going for the stars. If you come, yes, start CNA, but make sure that you're either going to registered nurse or BMP, nurse practitioner, or even just, you know, make sure, just make sure that you have your master's, your, you know, BSA or BSN or something, please. But I also want to say that nursing or healthcare is not the only it's not the only job that is in america i know that a lot of our people that's what they do and that's why people like them indians and all of those other people you find them doing it no now i've i've added it to it it's only health sector now it's health sector and it everybody now cyber security everybody <laughs> no the moment somebody says ah what are you doing ah, scum master. Ah, hey why would you do this for me tell me about this <laughs> you know, say, let me do scum master <laughs> so so i feel like nigeria we're just very you know straight focused <laughs> like that we don't want to like spread yeah ty first said trust me from experience proper planning budget planning mm -hmm. and the right plan destination is key mm -hmm. and that was uh -huh that he was retreating that thing i said earlier true, true, true. if you are not somebody that alarm they chase you from africa that you are dying yeah you can just come if you are like that but if you are relatively comfortable before you come plan very well oh, budget no. very well select your destination very well and by the grace of god you'll be fine. 
And someone said, Oluwa Mutukwe, yes, I work in health okay. care sector and the laboratory department are all Indians. Okay. They are okay. people we think to they are take... coming to take their jobs. But somebody mm. said it, that um, the, 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 the Oyibo will call it the crab, ment crab in a bucket mentality mm. and um, in, in pigeon, it's the a better pass my mm. neighbor mentality. I mm. think we, we, we are just unnecessarily competitive. We have this unhealthy rivalry <laughs> amongst us. When we are supposed to be collaborating, to we are competing. And at the end of the day, when they when we are too separate, when they had us together, we don't amount to Honestly, anything. on this matter, like I had a friend, we're supposed to start a business together. We had, you know, said we're going to do this, you know, do this. We're trying to find, you know, sources to it. Tell me how this friend of mine calls me months after to say, hey, I need your help. You know, I need your license number and all that. And I'm like, why? Oh, you know that business I said I wanted to do? I started it already. I said, what business? We were supposed to do this together. How? And they said, well, you know, I just wanted to do my own thing. And I'm like, what? Like, we're friends. I understand if you you know maybe you see some things about me you don't like but i feel like you should actually own up to me but that's what a lot of nigerians do instead of us to come together to you know build things together do you know that i work as a registered nurse and one of my patients one time said that they're indians said that what they do is they all come together like group of 10 people they'll come together they will help one guy get a franchise of one big business that he's doing well let's say maybe name one name one brand name one maybe e3 maybe which one McDonald's. maybe mcdonald's they'll come together they'll be, give, give, um, donate money they'll get a franchise that guy will start his own franchise when that guy goes in maybe six to one month one year they all come together again donate money another man another person will also get a franchise and that's how these guys were able to own stores I forget the name of the restaurant now, but like it's a food chain store. And now 10 people have 10 franchises. That way, even if I'm struggling with something, I know that I have a brother because that person will now become my brother from another mother that I can reach out to. You know, that's a community we're building. But I think Nigerians are like, mm -mm, I don't want to do business with you. I don't want you. You're already doing this. They'll start analyzing what they're not supposed to analyze. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of Nigerians... We need yeah. to come, we need to be better. We, we need, need, to, we need better, to collaborate more. Then we also need to slow stories and um, and the um, just restricting people. Hello, I can't hear. Okay, yeah, yeah. We also need to slow down on the on the on the negative stories and restricting people to small things, making sure that when people come in, they they are they become small. I I remember when I moved here and I moved here um, as a branch manager of a bank in Nigeria, like a branch of one of the biggest and the oldest bank in Nigeria, and all the people that will meet here will just tell me that, oh, you can, you cannot work in a bank in America. Um, yeah. You, 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 you uh, they, they were just encouraging me to go find one very low level job. <laughs> tell and, me, tell me the job you went to. Tell me, you have to tell people. Do you know? Do you know the first job I actually did in America? They called it um, concierge. It's 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 like the lowest level job, and I was at this job. They were paying me the money that he couldn't even fuel the car that I take to that job. Then the, what people were projecting on me was I was beginning you to, have to suffer. I, like, I was even yeah. beginning to accept it that when I go to, to apply for bank jobs, I was applying for very low level jobs until one day I got this interview and I met with the interviewer and we, we talked and the interviewer was like shocked and was like no I can't I can't interview you I need to refer you to yeah, my boss to a higher position then, how many higher positions did then you get? I met with the boss and the boss felt like no 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 I have to refer you to my boss 
and eventually i got a job that is much much more higher than what i applied for true true and that's true today earlier today i met with her and i told the, the person I, I i met today she used to be head of risk management of a bank in the, and she's here in the u.s doing healthcare job and nobody told her that it's possible that she could get for a you job. to get a job with your experience wow. from back home mm, so true. i told her i shared my own story with her and i told her it's Did you possible do you remember <laughs> did you remember one time someone told you to come and go and work in an african school yeah. <laughs> what did the guy tell you? <laughs> that what was what did the guy tell you to do that was what my first that was actually my first job offer <laughs> in america that i'm gonna be cutting <laughs> so, so, go like, with, ah, with me scotter <laughs> yeah me I'm, I'm just gonna cut my hand off <laughs> Let me tell you guys what you guys don't know. What you can do, it's not domesticated. He doesn't even know how to own knife or something. Not that she won't be cutting it. <laughs> yeah. He was an evil man. He said, yeah, my brother so said, no, I can just help you to, you know, get your business to the next level. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm, you know, I have experience, business manager, help you. The guy said, no, I need a meat cutter. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this guy has an account with the bank I was with. He knew my potential and all, and all he could offer me. What's me talking? You, you, you didn't even say that, oh, sorry, I don't have, but he said, I should come and be cutting me. Well, it's okay. Yeah, um, sometimes in 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 trying to be too humble mm -hmm. we lose value we forget who we are and what whoever is listening here right now what thing i just want to tell you is that never forget who you are hmm. it's I in think, you i think someone said that it's yeah in... someone said that that you know just stay focused um, yeah 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 I if you even if you have to do said, even me. if you even if you have to do something that is below what you know you can do you you may have to do that to survive mm. but never lose focus never stop believing in yourself mm. and just continue to apply and aspire or believe me the opportunity will come and just go for okay, it so let, let me let me lighten it up now which day has ever pained you the most since you came to this US? Hmm? Since you immigrated? Which day? Like you said, ah, I need to go back. Was this not set? Is it by force? Have you had those those kind of moments? I think by nature. Mm. I don't I don't I don't take things to act that much. So I won't say I've had like a particular instance that made me feel like that but there has been periods that have been very very frustrating maybe I'm, i was doing a job that i wasn't fulfilling or i didn't have money or i was even jobless mm -hmm. and i i i got i had right off the university back in nigeria and i i worked non-stop for about I came here maybe 15 years or more before i came here so i was always employed and doing mm. you know relatively well mm. so my whole adult life mm. i have never been unemployed mm -hmm. so but america introduced me yeah. to unemployment america is not your name. america introduced me to <laughs> underemployment and employment and unemployment and <laughs> You, you believe me when people there are things that you have to go through to understand before i came to america when people talk about things like that they are only concepts that i can understand um intellectually but now i have first-hand experience and those were tough moments and those are things that i will feel like but on a lighter note, mm. the things that 
I that I can say that <laughs> made me feel like <laughs> I should be back home is they are like maybe when you want to fix something in your house, ah, maybe a little thing DIY. is broken. Why? And that's the one I don't like in this America. Yeah. <laughs> and then people say do DIY. They, yeah, I they, you, do you, 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 they, they, they want you to do it yourself. I don't and want to. From where we're coming from. <laughs> Very easily, you can I, just, I, I, just I, I, get I, I, out of I, I, your I, I, flat I and just. <laughs> You can always get somebody to do something for you at a price, but here, <laughs> DIY is not is not something I find very. <laughs> Motor saw that's because signature said, I said, I miss making my hair in Ninja. The food, child. Yeah. She misses Ninja. Let me tell you one of the, I think, and now my hair is totally finished. Let's not even forget it. Because, you know, when we come here, also the fact that people said, oh, no, you don't have to go and make your hair in the salon. Or it's even very expensive, so let's not even lie. Um, that you can make your hair from home or just do it yourself. Anyway, that thing messed up my hair totally. But, you know, before I say saying, you know what? Come rain, come shine. I will go to the salon. But I do miss, you know, that trips you just make your hair from nigeria from the salon it's not even cheap even the salon we used to go to very expensive what's the name make me in nigeria we uh, like you know you go to that make you can't even compare how much we pay to how much it is here if i go and wash my hair in my friend's salon my friend has a salon she, she actually gives me a discount though but even at that ah, most people can't afford it so that Tony, I share similar stories, and I remember our conversation before I left Nigeria. Doing your research is very foundational. True that, true that. Um, let me see what other questions. Oh, what did you have to learn to do here? And on this, I'm going to say, Tony, kudos to you for dropping. This is Taya Dekoya. Hey, bro. Hi. Hi, Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, kudos to you. Because I know ba way back in Nigeria, you wouldn't even touch plates to wash plates or do anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> but here you are. You wash plates, you do dishes first, thank you. Yeah. You do you do laundry, thank you. <laughs> so what do you think about that? Like, you know, as a as a big man, African man <laughs> in Nigeria that they bring food to you. <laughs> now you yeah. take your plate to the sink. Yeah. But <laughs> When when you are in room, you are, <laughs> even even you yourself, you are making mouth now. Do you wash plates or do you wash clothes in in but Nigeria? You I always. Do. I don't think since we got married, like we ever lived like just us alone. We always have housemaids, and you know, uh, 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 yes, you cook. But uh, the the truth of matter is that America. And uh, someone like Ty can relate. <laughs> this, this, that <laughs> does this is man. Like, yes, yes. That guy has much place. <laughs> but that's but is that those things, man? But that's 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 the reality when you are in Rome. Yeah, you just there are so many things now. Like you, you just you just have to to ad adapt. You, can, you just have. To. Shadrach said, "You take your place to the sink and wash it yourself." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Africa, you will uh, uh, you will see that they'll bring bowls mm -hmm. and water for you. So let me tell you guys yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. One of uh, my before office, you go, before mm -hmm. you go, till I say something that one sweet thing is I'm grateful as I got to know mm -hmm. the kids more. Mm -hmm. As sincerely, and I was just telling you this with on on employment <laughs> and underemployment. One one sweet thing that I can always say is that those periods are also bonding period with the kids. You get to spend more time, take them to school, bring them from school, spend more time with them. So, I, in fact, when when I'm underemployed, I all <laughs> unemployed. <laughs> I spend more time with it. But when a good job comes. Yeah then yeah. no time yeah. and you start missing yeah. those times that you used to spend with the yeah. kids so yeah. i think you can't win it all you you lose some, you do, you yeah, lose some. yeah so let me tell you one story of how one of my uncles came from back home and that's how this man came first day you know african man came we served him is there a mission? Bring water to water. 
Okay, I accept it. Okay. Watch that. I, I, this man stood up, left plate on the dining, went to watch only no, then he just stood up and went to the to the family room. I didn't say anything. The other time again, it I, I he did the same thing. I, the other time now asked, I said, we don't have bowl. We don't have bowl. <laughs> 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 Stand up, wash your hands. So you know, then he will go wash his hand in the sink. But then he will lift the plate when he's going. He will leave the plate like that. I said, Ah, America, you don't do this. So. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like I'm still cooking for you. You will eat microwave food. I'm <laughs> still making food from scratch. <laughs> you will eat microwave food. <laughs> but you know, those are the things that. If I'm you have that to, said, you have to the good part is that abroad makes our men more supportive. We've always I'm been more supportive. Begging. Back, back home, I'm we pay begging. for it. Now, we have to do the hard the labor. Thing, it's okay. Is it is what home, it is. Back home, <laughs> if, you're, if you're doing it, they will say your, your wife has cooked something. <laughs> <laughs> now, wow. <well. laughs> they'll they 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 cook, they cook spinach. Finish for you that all this is for food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it's still the same. Back home we pay for it. Now we have to do it. So we've always been there for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, why you? Yeah. So next question, please. I want to <laughs> ask about you know how you cope with the the English, American English or whatever you know, and your Nigerian English. Do you hear what you say? Yeah, personally, I'm a very very stubborn person in that. <laughs> aspect i i i still i would say that i still speak maybe 90 percent the way i speak back home in nigeria but there are some words that are very tricky that like water <laughs> just, <laughs> call it, yes call, like, <laughs> like, like 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 let's say at my job at the bank we're always talking about <laughs> quarters, like, but most times I just, after like, I will say it and I'll see the expression on people's faces, like, they are looking at me like, so I just say Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, yeah, so I, when, when, when you're from where I'm from and you're as old as I am, it's it's hard for you to to want to speak and when I gonna I want now. So <laughs> I so I just I just try as much as possible to speak the same way I normally talk, but I I know the uh, there are some words that you have to, you have yeah. to twist your tongue yeah. <laughs> in the American way. So that's what I that's what I that's well, what I, well for me. I think because, you know, I get work with a lot of, you know, white patients, you know, a lot of African-Americans. I don't, I don't even know. I, I know I struggled not to, because I didn't want to, you know, because let me tell you guys the backstory. When I was in my teenage years, right, my cousins that used to live here came to Nigeria. These guys came for, I think, three months to spend the summer holiday. Tell me how, after they spent the summer holiday, my English switched to American English. I swear to God. <laughs> Maybe because I can mimic people, I'm, I can imitate people. By the time these guys left, me and my sister, we used to speak, oh yeah, we used to speak American. <laughs> <laughs> and then we would lie to people. We lie to people. They say, oh my God, you guys came, you, you live abroad. I say, yeah. We, so we used to live. And, and then, you know, I didn't even know if I was coming to live here. I didn't know anything about America that I was coming to live here. But we just used to like to people and then people give us professional treatment. You know how now, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Once you can speak, I wanna gonna you <laughs> so you know, I was like after I grew up, I was like, that was very sad. Like, you know, that was a very sad period. Like, why am I forming accents? Mm -hmm. I know how we used to all abuse people that used to form accents. Ah, mm -hmm. He has never seen airports before, you never entered a plane, but he can speak and everything. So when I came here, I was like, I will I will make sure my English stays you know, Nigerian, 1,000% like that. But then I started working and, you know, then it started changing little by little, little by little. So, you know, but I feel like, yeah, like if Emota says that for the kids, is their tone that switches so fast. Yeah, she still speaks her normal English. Yeah. I feel like 
and be, be, and I, I need to say this to to encourage people as well that don't don't develop any kind of complex because of your answer. <laughs> I like. People, yeah, I'm, I'm just ad advising people generally because um, I've been privileged to work in one of the most affluent neighborhoods in America, and as a banker, and as a, an assistant manager in a bank, and I speak with, I get to talk with the I am my of the society and I still talk the way I'm talking now and some of them are quite impressed but the only thing is that just be prepared they will always ask you where are you the, from yeah. where are you from no no that one that where one are you they from and they'll be like oh you guys speak English or you they, they assume that most people from sub-Saharan Africa speak French so some people even come into my office. Of that? Do you think it's because of that? Or because they just want to feel like you guys are from Africa, you guys are in the bush or something? No, 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 no. When I, sometimes I get, I, I see people even walk into my office and they, when they see them, when I tell them I'm from Nigeria, they speak French to me. And I tell them, no, 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 I don't speak French. Nigeria was colonized by mm. the British. So we speak French, mm. uh, English. We went to school in english and here we are and most times people actually will say that oh your english is so good because we get to you know the tenses and all that most times when you meet people who are actually educated here and you talk to them they are impressed most people who are going to have issues with your accent are people who are not really educated Americans. Oh my yeah. God! So and they they, they, they just speak, so. yeah the way they expect you to speak a particular way like if, the, the strict. If that. if if a Chinese man and or Chinese woman with thick accents mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. not ashamed of speaking English and they are joining it together, they are joining tenses and present and future tense together and they are not ashamed. There's no how I'm going to be ashamed. Of speaking my English with even listless accents or no accent or whatever thick accents, nobody is gonna make me feel some type of way. If they ask me, they, sometimes they want to frustrate you. Some people try to frustrate you, especially the customer service agent. They always ask, "I don't understand," and I always reply, "Am I speaking Latin?" <laughs> <laughs> At times, it's frustrating and funny, and some apologize. Honestly, they do that a lot once they pick an accent they assume that because you speak with an accent you don't have sense that has happened to me before and i'm quick to pick your you know i'm i will call your bs honestly and like, i will pick it up and, and, that, and you're not like doing I, that. like I, don't forget what i said earlier and it's the same every society is structured the same somebody who works in a call center they they're not the most educated they are not the cream de la cream of the society mm -hmm. and most times people who are down they're always looking for people who are beneath them so that they can also feel good so it's just that sociological thing that is happening there so don't let them get to you I, it's very irritating believe me i know I'm sure I've experienced it too, but there are some things that I just don't keep in my head because <laughs> it's just not important. I will call your PS immediately. Yeah, like, excuse just, you. Yeah. I know I've but talk, this, I've that person had a, a point, and I've actually seen you fight with people. <laughs> you know, on the Even I'll be like, excuse like, me, I'm speaking, I'm speaking <laughs> Queen's English. Do you understand the English you're speaking? <laughs> I'll be like, excuse you. <laughs> yes, not the guy speak correct English. Yes, yes they, they, can't. they can't. They can't. <laughs> they be like, we was, we was, we was. You, we yeah, was going true. to tell you. I'm like, what? I can't hear you. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, so you're saying you didn't? Okay, pronounce the word. If it's what? If it's W A T E R, pronounce it. <laughs> they say water. Water is it T H? <laughs> is it yeah. T H? <laughs> Okay, so, um, we can go on and on about this, but let me ask you, would you do this again? If you most, had the chances to, 
to relocate to Japa, you know, to emigrate, whatever, would you do it again? Most definitely. And like you said at the beginning of this, before Japa became a thing, that was when we did this. We, and like you said, when we left Nigeria, it wasn't fashionable. It wasn't in vogue. It was, we were even, we, we couldn't really tell people that. We're just, oh, well, we don't, people because that most people, when, back. When, when you, when you would tell people, be like, ah, oh, do you know how many yeah, people so discourage me? <laughs> Directors of, you know, they'd be like, oh, don't leave. Why do you want to leave your good job? What, do you, what are you going you want to do? There's nothing this job to, in America. Sweep, to go and be sweeping the floor in To go and be, be packing snow. <laughs> but, when you know the vision you have for yourself, for your family, and you know what, if that move aligns with the vision that you have, definitely do it. How we, how we do this over and over and over again? Because it's, it's, apart from all the good things, it has also been a wonderful adventure. And I have a good partner doing the adventure. <laughs> the adventure. Wait, wait. So you're saying that you don't suffer from FOMO? And, you know, I think God, the way God has created me, and that's how I am in everything. I can be for this thing, but the moment I move, every, the, the few, a few times I've gone back to Nigeria since I moved here has been because you dragged me. Is I dragged you. For I love you, that's the truth. Me. That's the truth. <laughs> I, I, I love Nigeria, and nobody can question my patriotism. I love Nigeria. The, the last time we were there, I was talking to people about Nigeria, and they feel like I even know more than the people who are still back home. Yeah. So, but I, I, I don't just make decisions emotionally. For me to say, I want to do this, I've looked at it, I've considered the pros and cons, and I feel like right now, this is what I want to do, this is where I want to be, so I don't have any FOMO. I'm not missing out on anything. So yes, I'm living my best saying life. saying that you don't follow Nigerian bloggers. You, you know, you know I don't. <laughs> Whatever. You know I don't. Yeah, as long as I have well, I, 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 On Twitter, I see everything that is happening in Nigeria in terms of the politics, me, the entertainment, and all that. Me, and I, I like follow, it. I follow, I follow Tunde Ednot, Don Jazzy, all of them. <laughs> I follow this lover. I don't like this lover that much you know mm. because i don't know my personal stuff those things are better enjoyed from afar yeah so i think yeah, but you know I, I i just feel like i have to know what's happening i just have to know what's happening but you know that's social media you want to know what's happening so mm -hmm. that's why i follow them like i want to know how people are doing mm -hmm. don't like they said just love <laughs> please oh i don't want this lover's problem i like this lover because <laughs> the moment you got me somebody will <laughs> tell us this lover will abuse your life <laughs> So I like this lover. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what other question? What else do you have for for somebody coming? Because we don't want to. So uh, this is very interesting. So please, Nolaide, you, are you gonna be my next guest? I need people to come up to say. Um, Mutas on the source signature. Some Mutas says, but almost things are bad back home. Anger in the land. May God help. Amen. Oh, it's bad. Let me tell you. I just got back. It's bad. I follow him to this is the latest gist. No, I haven't. So I just came back but, on Instagram. But, today. but that is, I think, I think um, we also need to be careful. How? The kind of narrative we're putting out there. Yeah, things mm -hmm. are bad, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. Inflation and economic hardship is a global thing right now. This last week that we finished, the, 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 the third biggest economy in the world, the Japanese economy went into recession. In fact, within that last week, about five countries declared that their economy is in recession. So it's, we, 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 we had the pandemic, we have war in Ukraine. So there are a lot of things happening now. We, you, we went shopping, you saw the price of egg has doubled. 
even ah, in America. So. And as the report is also saying that as right now, the credit card debt in America has never been this high. Hmm. People, people are just people are still working in America or anywhere because we have access to credit. So it's a global thing. We just I need to let people think, know I that think things are going to get better. So I, I, and, Honestly, I have to come in there. I think it would be better if there were infrastructures. We can talk like this because I know that, yes, even though things are bad here as well, at least I have access to internet. Like, I don't have to pay through my nose to get internet, to be online, to watch skits that will make at least things go away for a while. There is light. I can't be so suffering and looking for food and then i'm still home and there's no electricity and i'm suffering in silence with sweat and everything i feel that's what yeah, makes de it worse. De definitely you can't compare nigeria to america but the point is getting bad is a journey countries don't just get bad in one day and getting better definitely is also going to be a journey things are not just going to get well overnight but what the kind of the kind of things we say about our country is also important so i i'm 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 optimistic i just believe that it, like the Yorubas would say by Marilo, things will not forever continue to be bad because things will have to get better and we all just be committed to doing our whatever we can do to make sure things get better even if it's just to give hope to people or to contribute whatever good thing we can contribute to the country or even if it's just to say good things about our country okay, okay. i hear you mr patriotic <laughs> <laughs> me I, I don't know maybe because you know i have staff back home and they're complaining every day every time. I, I i feel i feel that i i i have people i have family i know but i know that yeah anyways thank you for coming um on mm -hmm. here today here there are food banks thank you basic amenities of yeah, life definitely. We can, ah, okay, that's why we are fortunate to be here and we are no longer food. affordable it is a yeah. problem i hope yeah. it change honestly. yes all of us honestly. yeah, yeah I, right. think, I feel like this this period if if you haven't like honestly appreciated that you you are in the us or uk or canada <laughs> this hearing was happening i'd be like oh you, man, you, thank yeah. you god <laughs> yeah like thank you, you about god that yeah. at least yeah i can send money yeah i'm not in there that they are sending money to me i can be the sender not mm -hmm. the send not, the receiver, not the receiver. Mm -hmm. so yeah thank you very much um we're gonna do this again next week sunday with another guest i feel like you didn't have Ask me all the questions you you meant about. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just saying it's we've we've spent a lot of time here. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be one hour, but like I feel it's always very engaging and interesting that it will probably go maybe over one hour. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thank you so much for coming on this show and being our first Japa guess <laughs> whether you want to believe it or not you jackpot <laughs> <laughs> but but did you just read my mind i want to say that i don't like that you jackpot. Just... <laughs> <laughs> i think i was reading the definition of jackpot today and you know in the dictionary it said it's a youth you know definition that says you uh you know you run away for the good life <laughs> did, you, did you not <laughs> did you or did you not? Well, it's okay. Whatever you want to call it. It's been it's been an interesting journey, and um, I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful for uh, that I had the opportunity, and I'm grateful to be here. And um, I really appreciate um, everybody that has come online and uh, shared their own story engage with so us he, their too. comments you're not the, you, i feel like you're not you're, you're, a, you're a bougie japanian and we just wonder they <laughs> please if you know you are so fat <laughs> <laughs> that you saw when 
when you jackpot, I need you to come tell me because I need to hear something. No, like, I, I hear you. but don't I know. forget, don't forget. I like I said, there was always it's 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 the diverse. I'm sure in my own, you think I'm um I didn't suffer enough. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you two, you are saying I did, yeah, yeah. But I'm sure, like a lot of people can still relate to my own kind of softness too. Yo so, is the uh, uh, yo was like upper level management, <laughs> upper echelon <laughs> suffering. <laughs> yeah, think, people that because really truly people have been through a lot. Yeah. Huh. I'm 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 really looking forward to a subsequent guest so that um we can learn from there. And I, I, I so I also feel like this is also since as Africans we don't really do therapy. But when we have <laughs> sessions like this, we can take talk about these things in the process, laugh about it and heal from whatever it is that has yeah. affected yeah. our mental health from our because you know how it took me years to get over the fact that you know it was a shock at one time when people called police on me ah in my life yeah. so yeah. you know i don't think i've gotten over that i don't think i i i, I guess it would, maybe when i talk to like, someone else kill like me, kill like <laughs> <laughs> which one? Oh, you call police why yeah. why so yeah you know. So, you know, but that's story for another day. Thank you guys for coming up today. I appreciate you guys. We will see you next week, Sunday. Thank you for having yeah. me. Thank yes. you, everyone. And I will save this. I'll save this live in case, you know, someone wants to watch it, you know. All right. Okay. So, All bye, right. guys. Bye, everyone. Thank you for contributing. Share, 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 share. Thank you. For the record, I love this lover. I have to have the kid. I'm, I don't want drag Bye. Bye. I need Bye. to connect with you guys. If I see okay. why everyone. All right. Bye bye. Thank Happy you. Happy belated birthday, TY. Yeah. You had okay. his birthday recently. Oh uh, my kids. Uh, my bye. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday, Tyo. <laughs>